Hey everyone, and welcome to another Deep Dies. Today we're taking on a topic that, well, let's be real, might not be your usual chat over coffee, you know? Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the prostate and how it affects uh, men's sex lives. It's one of those things people tend to mumble about or see for awkward doctor visits, but honestly, there's a lot more to it than most guys realize. You got that right. The prostate usually comes up when there's a problem, especially later in life. But honestly, it's a big deal for a man's health overall throughout his life, especially when we're talking about, you know, having kids and all that. Exactly. We're really digging into all the stuff you found for this one, the research articles, even those videos, which were surprisingly interesting, by the way. And one thing's for sure, the prostate is, well, more than just a, a you know, that walnut shaped gland chilling below the bladder. It's important for a whole lot more than just, well, bathroom breaks. That's actually a good place to start. I mean, yeah, that walnut thing might make some guys cringe, but it gets at where it's located, right? Right at the neck of the bladder, wrapped around the urethra. And that's super important to get because it explains why when the prostate's acting up, you get those, um, let's just say, inconvenient bathroom trips. But we're getting off track here. Before we get into all that can go wrong, how about we cover what the prostate's supposed to be doing when everything's working right? Okay, so... Back to basics for a sec. We know it's part of the uh, the guy's system down there, but what does it actually do? To put it simply, its main gig is making prostatic fluid, which is like a key ingredient in semen. Think about 20 to 30 percent of, well, what a man ejaculates. That's prostatic fluid. Whoa, that's way more than I would thought. So it's not just a bit player. It's like a major part of things. But it can't be just about the amount, right? This fluid, it's got to be pretty specialized stuff. Exactly. The stuff's got enzymes, zinc, citric acid, you name it, all there to help out and keep those sperm cells happy. One big one is called prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, which, uh, well, it makes the semen more uh, fluid, obviously. But get this, it helps the sperm actually swim better. Wait, so sperm can't swim on their own. They need, like, a little push. I always pictured it uh, differently. It's easy to imagine things simply, but in reality, it's way more complex. Think of PSA like a, hmm a microscopic slip-in slide for the sperm, you know, to help with their motility. And if there isn't enough PSA, maybe because of a health issue or some treatments, it can really mess with a guy's chances of, you know, becoming a dad. Okay, now that's an image I won't be forgetting anytime soon. <laughs> so the prostate is like this factory and delivery service all in one, making the goods and then making sure they're uh, prepped for the journey. But from the research you send over, it seems like the prostate's influence doesn't stop there. Yeah. It's got a big role in how our hormones work, too, yeah. right? 100%. And this is where things get super interesting. We hear a lot about testosterone, but the prostate, it's like the main stage for turning testosterone into this other hormone called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. DHT, right, right. That rings a bell. But remind me again, why is this particular hormone so important? Think of DHT as testosterone, but like cranked up to 11, especially when it comes to the prostate. It's what makes the prostate grow and develop, especially during puberty. Ah, puberty. Those awkward years we all look back on so fondly. So this tiny gland is basically calling the shots during that whole time. That's a lot of responsibility for something so small. It really is. That's why getting how DHT works is so important. Because here's the thing. As guys get older, DHT doesn't just stop with the whole growth thing. It can actually be part of the problem when we're talking about the issues men have with their prostate later in life. But before we get into all that, I want to emphasize that this DHT and prostate connection, it's essential for understanding how some treatments work. Like some meds, they stop testosterone from turning into DHT. And those are often used for things Things like benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. We'll get to that a bit later. Right, that makes sense. So keeping DHT in check is key. But like you were saying, things don't always go smoothly. Mm. And from what I've seen in the research, when there's a prostate problem, it can really mess with a guy's, you know, sex life. Yeah, and that's something we got to talk about, you know, openly and honestly. I get it. It can be a bit, well, embarrassing to bring up. But the thing is, prostate problems, they're really common, especially as men get older. And a lot of times there are things that can help. So no need to, you know, just tough it out in silence. Totally. And it's important to remember here we're all about creating a comfortable space to learn. So let's get into it. When we talk about the prostate and sex, what are some of the uh, issues that can come up? Probably the one everyone's heard of is uh, erectile dysfunction, ED. And it's not just about having trouble getting an erection. It's also about keeping it up, you know, or even just not being as firm. And as you can imagine, that can put a real damper on intimacy and even on a guy's relationship. 
definitely. Makes sense considering where the prostate is and everything it does. Yeah. But I've also read about other things like problems with ejaculation. Not as many people talk about that. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's not just about getting an erection. Prostate issues can show up in a lot of ways when it comes to ejaculation. Like some guys have pain when they ejaculate, which obviously that's not good. Others, they might notice they're not uh, ejaculating as much, which goes back to how the prostate's involved in making that fluid. And then there's this thing called retrograde ejaculation, which isn't actually harmful, but can be, well, a bit concerning. Retrograde ejaculation. That's where, if I'm remembering right, the uh, the semen goes back into the bladder instead of out. Exactly. Often happens when the prostate's enlarged and kind of blocks things up. Again, not dangerous, but I can see why some guys would be worried about it, especially if they're trying to have kids. Yeah, that makes total sense. And even just the mental side of things, you know, the stress and worry that can come with these issues. Yeah. That's got to be tough on a guy's sex life and just his overall well-being, right? Seems like it's all connected. Absolutely. The mind and body, they're totally linked, especially when we're talking about something as personal as, you know, sex. And it's not even just about what happens in the bedroom. Remember how we were talking about the prostate being right next to the urethra, the tube that carries urine? Well, that means when the prostate acts up, it can lead to some pretty unwanted bathroom issues, too. Right. So it's not just about uh, romance, unfortunately. I know frequent urination, having to go all the time, that's a common sign of prostate problems. Is that because of how close it is to the urethra? Yep. When the prostate gets bigger, it can actually press on the urethra, and that makes it harder to empty your bladder all the way. That's how you end up with all those annoying symptoms, always feeling like you got to go, especially at night, or like having a weak stream, trouble starting and stopping, or that feeling you haven't fully gone. I can only imagine dealing with all that, always having to run to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's going to put a damper on things. Seems like these prostate issues can have a ripple effect you know, affecting not just a guy's physical health, but his relationships and intimacy, too. 100 percent. It's easy to see how those symptoms would lead to feeling self-conscious, anxious, maybe even frustrated. And that goes for both partners. And it all comes back to being open about it, talking to each other and getting help if you need it. Yeah, you've hit on something really important there, how this affects relationships. You know, it actually reminds me of this friend of mine we were talking a while back and he was dealing with some prostate stuff and he mentioned how the whole like always worrying about it, having to go to the bathroom all the time. Mm. It was really putting a strain on his marriage. Just goes to show these things, they go way beyond just the physical stuff. It really does. Right. And that's exactly why getting help, being open with your partner, it's so important. These problems, they're common and there are ways to deal with them, to have a better quality of life. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of quality of life, we've talked about sex and, well, bathroom issues, but there's another big thing here. Fertility. From the research you sent, it seems like there's a definite link between the prostate and, well, a man's ability to have kids. Oh, definitely. And that's something a lot of people don't really get. That whole thing about the prostate making prostatic fluid, the stuff that helps sperm survive, you know, get where they need to go that's directly related to being able to have kids. So if the prostate's not working right, it can totally affect a man's chances of becoming a father. Can you give us some, like, specific examples of what that might look like? Sure. Let's say you have an enlarged prostate. If it's pushing on the urethra and messing with ejaculation, well, that can affect how well, you know, everything gets delivered, so to speak. Huh. Or in more serious situations, you have things like prostate cancer and the treatments for that, like surgery or radiation. Those can sometimes damage the, uh, the parts that are involved in making and transporting sperm. It's complicated, but the bottom line is prostate health and fertility, they're definitely connected. Sounds like if you're thinking about having kids or even if it's something you might want down the road, it's worth talking to your doctor about your prostate sooner rather than later, wouldn't you say? 100%. Catching things early, being proactive about your prostate health. That's so important for a lot of reasons. And yeah, fertility is one of them. It's about understanding the risks, knowing if it runs in your family and having those conversations with your doctor, even if they're a little awkward. Like they say, knowledge is power, right? And speaking of knowledge, this whole deep dive has been, wow, really eye-opening, even for me. I feel like we've gotten way past the basics here, from like the nitty-gritty of this prostatic fluid to how it all affects a man's life, you know, physically and mentally. And hopefully anyone listening is feeling like, okay, I can take control of this, you know, mm -hmm. knowing what to watch out for, when it could help, how to advocate for yourself, that's what matters. Couldn't agree more. So to everyone listening, thanks for joining us for this deep dive on the prostate. It's a small thing, 
but makes a big difference. And we hope you're walking the way with a better understanding of how important it is and what you can do to take care of yourself. And remember, this is really just the start. Keep those questions coming, keep learning, and talk to your doctor. Until next time, stay curious.